Hey there, folks. Uh, so, now that the slate's been out a few weeks, uh, I think it's time to review uh, some of the things that have come up since it's come out. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been as smooth as I, I had hoped for, but I had hoped for no problems, and quite frankly, that was unrealistic, um, if you couldn't tell by the delays from... Uh, from day one, basically. Uh, but anyway, I want to go over a few quick little things to help um, installs go a little bit smoother, uh, to help the console feel a little bit better. Uh, cover one small step that I didn't quite relay the right information on in my original guide, and unfortunately I can't update a video once it's already been uploaded. I can upload a new video, sure, but I can't edit that video without deleting and just a new one. So anyway, here we are. Uh, first thing I want to talk about the motherboard screws. Uh, so the slate, I believe I went over this in, in plenty of other videos, but the slate uses M2 screws. Uh, specifically, I have here M2 by 2.5. Uh, so these are two and a half millimeter long screws. The slate should be shipping with M2 by three. Uh, so you get an extra half a millimeter on your screws, but these are going to be the exact same diameter, and then the head diameter is 3.3 by 0 0.3. Uh, so, M so again, the retail ones are M2 by 3, but the head diameter is the exact same. Um, but the reason I want to talk about that is because the original Nintendo uh, Game Boy Advance SP from the factory, Nintendo shipped it with um, self-threading screws because it's installed in plastic. That's not quite an option for the machined shells, uh, so instead we used uh, machine screws, uh, M2 to be precise. Now, unfortunately, the hole diameter of some of, of these three holes in some revision motherboards, not all of them, just very few, i surprised I actually had one on hand that has this problem, um, but realistically, the holes in the motherboard weren't cut big enough from the factory. And it's not really a problem with the um, self-threading screws because you thread them in, you, you insert them, and they just thread right through the motherboard. It's not a problem. But with the machine screws, they don't do that, and they just kind of get jammed in there. So as you can see, that guy is not quite sitting properly. Uh, you see it's just sticking in a couple threads, and. You know, it ain't going anywhere. I, could, I can pull it out, it's not a problem. But the reason I wanna bring that up is if I were to sit here and keep screwing this in, it could cause a gap between the motherboard and the shell. We want the shell to be flat up against the motherboard, otherwise it could cause issues with the button feel. Um, a too loose screw on the top will cause issues with both the D-pad and A and B, they won't feel right. Um, I've seen in some cases, of course I don't have one on my desk handy with the right buttons, but I've seen in some cases where, ah, oh, and of course that one has for CNC buttons. Okay, so with the stock plastic buttons, in some cases, if this screw is not installed all the way, you can like press the button down and, and like turn it and it'll get jammed in there. Um, and that is a problem with this screw in particular. The solution, because I've just spent so many minutes waffling about a problem without even talking about problem, possible solutions. Take a Torx driver, a T6 or a T7 should work. I'm using a T7, it's a little bit bigger. Uh, depending on your specific drivers, you might need to use the bigger one. But for the iFixit kits, because they're tapered, both will work, uh, but the idea is we're going to use our Torx bit as a reamer. And literally, I'm just going to stick it in the screw hole, give it a couple twists, and then pull out. That's it. Now, if I take this screw that is jammed in those threads, I can thread that in, no problem. It goes all the way home. I'm gonna do the same thing for this top screw hole that I was having the problem with. Again, that's a T7 Torx bit. Let me get one more screw here. Oop. 
that's more than one. There we go. Oh, let me get another screw because that one's gone. I'll just leave extra screws out. How about that? And now you can thread that in no problem and it doesn't even get stuck. Easy peasy. Um, it's not something I thought to talk about during the original video because it it's apparent to me that that is a problem with screws in some cases. So I, I just didn't think to mention it, but a lot of people don't spend nearly as much time as I do with a screwdriver in their hand. So what seems intuitive to me when it comes to screws is not exactly intuitive to everyone else. And so I just, I just wanted to mention that, try and help out a few installs here and there. And while we're talking about screws, these two bottom ones plus this cart slot screw, if these are all too tight, your start and select buttons are gonna feel like absolute garbage. Now, in this case, I don't even have the cart slot screw in this one because there's no back on this thing. Um, but as you can see, my buttons are, are quite almost recessed in this shell and that's because I don't have that cart slot screw. If I come in from behind and push on the motherboard to put it where it's supposed to be, you can see the buttons are sticking out quite a bit more. Um, so pay attention to these three motherboard screws and this cart slot screw. Uh, it might take a little bit of tuning to get it exactly how you want it to be. I think I just got thermal paste on this thing. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to clean. Okay, go figure. Um, it, it's not too big of an issue, but I, like I said, not everyone understands um, exactly how tight a screw is supposed to be, especially when we're going to metal from plastic. It's just not intuitive. So sometimes, you know, just try it out, see how the buttons feel, put it together. And if it's too tight, you know, things aren't working, try coming back, backing the screw off an eighth a turn, put it back together, and then try it again. I think in a lot of cases, you'll find that that, that cleans up a lot of the issues with button feel. Um, next thing I wanna cover is regarding the screen. And for that, I'm going to whip out the same slate that I did in the original uh, install video, as it were. Uh, let me go ahead and pull that apart. So if you'll recall in the uh, original instruction video that I had released, I had mentioned that um, the ribbon cable, you don't need to crease, you know, you just kind of fold it up and then press the back panel on and, you know, things will, things will seat themselves and all will be fine. Uh, but that is not always the case for every install. So let me pull this off and then I will pull off the back panel and I will show you what I did. So instead of just letting, oh, let me back that one out so I can pull that off. Okay. So instead of just letting this um, kind of flop around and uh, spring up against the back panel and against the screen, we want to actually crease the ribbon so that it is nice and flat. You see there are three creases for this M shape, uh, two on the top and then one on the bottom. Uh, and all we, all I did was I got everything into position, um, got the screen in, got the board in, got the Game Boy board in, everything lined up. And then once it was all lined up, I just came in here and gave it a pinch to make sure that that was nice and flat. And this way we don't have the back panel pressing up against the screen, causing it to pop out. So in the original video, I had mentioned uh, that you want to make sure to clean the surfaces that the screen adheres to. That is still the case. Uh, it's just the reason I mentioned that was a complex issue that we didn't quite have all the details on just yet. I thought it was, um, you know, one-off coincidence. Uh, and then it started happening to couple other people and I played it up as environmental factors uh, but then a little bit more research we found out that everyone who was having that issue hadn't 
bent that screen cable. And I instinctively do that, or at least I had instinctively done that with a few of my other builds. I just didn't want to mention it in the video because I don't want people creasing it in case they don't have their alignment right because you can't uncrease that ribbon. So make sure you get the alignment spot on before you crease it. One tiny little thing that I want to mention while we're on the subject uh, is this screen board. Uh, in some cases, I have seen some SPs or some other mods that don't quite clear this board properly. You can lift the board over the ledge down underneath the SP board and then and then uh, sit it at an angle like this. In some cases, that gives you just a little bit more clearance, but you have to do that before you crease the ribbon because since I've creased this ribbon, I can't angle this board. That's just going to push the board out as soon as I push that ribbon flat. So, like I said, make sure you get your alignment checked before you make any commitments. But as long as you've got your kit tested and you've got the screen, the board, and the SP installed, then you're good to go to crease it and then get the back plate installed. And then we'll just tighten down that screw that I backed off earlier and we're good to go. And then all my buttons feel great. So I can go ahead and reassemble it. Even my start and select, even without that last screw. Uh, don't forget your square nut, mine fell out. Um, but I'll go ahead and, I'm actually gonna do this off camera. I'm not gonna finish reassembling it right now because I do gotta make a small tweak for my prototype buttons that I forgot to transfer over. Um, but otherwise, that's it. Uh, I, I hope you guys are enjoying the slate. It was a hell of a journey getting to where we are. Um, I, I'm, I, I'm absolutely pleased with how it came out. Um, looking at it now, of course, as always, there's always, oh, well, if I had started from scratch, I probably wouldn't have done it that way. I'd have done it maybe, maybe a little bit different, but I'm still very pleased with how it came out. Um, a few minor, minor, very minor finishing details uh, that I just wanna go over. Because we're here, I have your attention, why not? The light pipes are designed to be flush, but they aren't in some consoles. It's purely how they fit. Uh, some of them are a little bit loose, so you hold the console and then the light pipe slips out of the hole. Um, yeah, I know it's less than ideal, but if you want it flush with the outside of the console, a little bit of glue on the inside might go might go a long way. Most of the consoles, the light pipes are um, like a press fit, so you can just push it down a little bit further and then it should be good to go. Uh, but on some of them, and happens to be this one, they're a little bit loose. On the older one I have, they are press fit and nice and flush. But this is of course an older model with completely different brackets, so it doesn't quite make sense to compare that. Um, little thing, I personally don't mind it either way. And now that I'm pointing it out, of course, it's all anyone's gonna be able to look at. Um, I think that's all I've got. I'm just, I'm super stoked. Oh. One more thing. I haven't seen anyone else do this, so I'll, I guess I'll try and point it out. Um, these are designed to fit with the speaker cloth, and uh, if you don't have one, you can always just take a little bit of paper towel and shove it in there. Um, it shouldn't affect the fit, but if you have, like, for instance, a red Sharpie on your paper towel, you know, you can, uh, you can spice things up a little. Huh? Huh? I have yet to see anyone do that, slate or otherwise, but works fine for me. I mean, obviously this one isn't a working slate, but I have done it on other slates and I don't know. I'm feeling, I'm feeling unnoticed here, uh, but that's it. That's all I've got. Sorry for rambling. Um, I hope this clears things up. And uh, if you haven't gotten to your slate yet, well, I sincerely hope you watch this video before you do. And if you have gotten to your slate and you're a little bit less than satisfied with the fit of some things, well, I hope this fixes that too. 
Uh, for all other things, please reach out to Retro Game Repair Shop or whomever you buy it from, which at the moment is only Retro Game Repair Shop, and I don't think that's changing, but I mean for like third-party sales. Uh, like if you're buying a pre-built one from some lot or whatever, re reach out to them. I, I can't help you with your order. I'm not, I'm not handling any of that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's been fantastic. I'll let you all get back to it and uh, enjoy your slates. Until next time, guys. Thanks for watching.